Hi, everybody. Welcome to No, It Ain't a Britain Yankee podcast. It's a Midwest Brew Review Roundtable. Nice, but these guys yeah. wanted me to introduce them. So <laughs> I did. I'm, my work is now done. What's going on? Who's going to speak for you guys? What's up? How's it going, Phil? It's going great, man. Good. Jay, good, good to join you. Or uh, Glad you could join us, too, over there. Uh, Florida, right? Yeah, thanks for having me. I always like talking to you guys. Anything... Anything that's beer related, I'm in for. Absolutely. Right. So, so we had this we had this idea. Uh, Billy, was this your idea actually? Yeah, yeah. You want me to you kind of run, run it down? You okay. So we we started a Facebook group, Midwest Brew Review Roundtable, which kind of coincides with some of our online stuff we're doing and some of our live streams. And the idea was to build a community and kick around cool beer ideas and talk about the local scene. And one of the best ideas that came out of it so far was this idea of comparing some old world beers to some new world beers. So what we all did was we all grabbed a classic European style beer, and then we found a local counterpart, and we're going to go ahead and crack those open and compare them and chat about them, right? Shall I start? Do it. Please. Okay. Well, I tell you, I have chosen that are, that are an English pub ale. <laughs> it's actually, I guess, what you can call uh, an ESB, but not an extra strong bitter, an extra special bitter. So I have Iron Maiden's Trooper, which is, hey, there we go. I knew that Jay was going to. Hey, whenever you point, do you know which way you're actually pointing to the person? So I do, yes, Jay. Yes, Jay. There we go. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to do this one because it comes from a brewery in England called Robinson's. And uh, I've got my Furkery glass, my full Imperial Pint <laughs> Furkery glass. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and crack that open. Um, so this beer is uh, the closest I could find to my local beer that I'm going to talk about later on in the show. Look at that. Oh, my goodness me. Isn't that delightful? <laughs> um, and I had to taste one or two of these ahead of the show just because I'd never had it before this, <laughs> but everybody kept telling me this was the beer that really was a good English pint. And I have to say it absolutely looks tremendous. Oh, let's turn that around so you can see that. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. How about that? Um, so cheers. Nice. Boys. That's my extra special, extra special bitter. We'll talk about it again. What's Jay got? I have, let me grab my cheaters. It's a German pills from all these. British Kinder. I, I dare you to pronounce it. <laughs> no way. But it's produced in Germany by Prestige Wine and Spirits Group. Uh, it's good. It was just bottled not even three months ago. Um, I did the Aldi thing just because. Uh, Phil, you told me about their beer a while back, and um, I poured it before the show. Kind of hard to see. I know I'm in a dark area, but uh, it's pretty clear. I'm drinking it out of my Guinness glass. Nice. Which, actually, this one is my mom's. God rest her soul. Um, and it's delicious. For an Aldi beer for six ninety nine, very good. So we did, we did an Aldi... Uh, we taste tested a bunch of Aldi beers that we just kind of grabbed one time. We did a video on that. And Maybe it was, was you guys I saw then. <laughs> I mean, it was so fun. Dude, we had so much fun with that. Mm -hmm. That was like. Yeah, yeah, some of them were bad. Yeah, some were, some were pretty good. Like I would go out and buy them for, you know, a weekend or whatever. Yeah, but. this one is worthy for sure. Like I'm not just saying that. This one I would buy more of because it's inexpensive and it's pretty darn good. Nice. So, is it a traditional German pills that you got? It is. Make me grab my. I'm assuming again. so because it's got an unpronounced yeah. name. <laughs> Pills German beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have two German beers. Nice. What is ah. it? Hey, come along. Tell us. Tell us what is the beer. <laughs> it is very good. <laughs> That's good beer. <laughs> All right. What you guys got then? Uh, I guess I'll go. I uh, have Bellhaven Brewery Scottish Ale. It says rich, nutty, and smooth. So here's this one. Bellhaven, right. 300 beers. Wait, what does it say? 300 years of beautiful beers. So they've been around quite a while. Um, and it says here, 100% Scottish optic and crystal barley malts for a nutty biscuit character. 
balanced with subtle spices from Challenger and Golding's Hops. All right, so, I mean, I poured this out a little while ago. It's still keeping that head real nice at nice. the top. And you got a Scottish hat on, haven't you? Oh, kind of. A little, yeah, a little plaid up there, a little Ike and Oak shout out. Hey, uh, that's right, laddie. Hey, yeah. there you go. <laughs> that's it. Well, this, this is quite tasty. I really like this. It's definitely like, like a rich, like nutty, biscuity, smooth, what you want in that Scottish ale. This is... It's, it's always good to get your Scottish ales from Scotland, isn't it? Yeah, I, I'm going to say, I mean, 300 years of brewing the same beer, so I think, uh, I think they got it. <laughs> well, Matt, uh, mine isn't quite 300 years old, but it close. It's uh, about, I'd say, uh, 203 years old. Okay. Uh, I went with uh, Bitburger. Bitburger. Oh. So, number one draft beer in Germany, right? I guess it'd be like our, our Miller Lite kind of, right? And that's, um, a, that's a German pills, right? Bitburger? Yep. Yeah. A premium German pills, yeah. <laughs> it's a new bit. I don't speak any German. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm sorry, I already poured this one. Um, lost yeah. lost some head here, but it's still pretty bubbly. Out of the big goblet. Clean beer. Clean beer. And if I remember, if I remember rightly, Sierra, didn't Sierra Nevada do uh, some sort of a collaboration with Bitburger? Yes, they did, and I, I haven't had a chance to try it. I don't know if you have. I have. And I didn't Stay. think much of it. Oh no! <laughs> I thought it was just okay. Can't all be winners. But there you go. Nah. All right. What about Uncle Bill? Bill? Oh. I, uh, straight from the, the old country, I'm a sucker for seasonals. These guys know this, but I have the, uh, I have the Iyengar, uh, best beer here. Nice. Ooh. Yeah. Super fresh. This is this year's version. So, and it's, it's never complete unless you have proper glassware. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> well done. Ah, that's good. That's awesome. I don't know what the lids are for. I'm not like a big like history buff on this kind of stuff but i would imagine it's it's to keep your enemies from putting poison in your glass right man i would so right right? yeah part of that and i think it's also to keep the oxygen out so it tastes better through the last sip but i could be wrong poison. stop people spitting in it yeah i think it's a sanitary measure i'm I'm, you know uh, i just kind of looked up a little bit and they were like keeps bugs out COVID, it keeps COVID out too. Keeps so. COVID out, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Apparently, along the years, we just decided, eh, fuck it, we'll drink the bugs. <laughs> well, <laughs> cheers, like everybody. Perfect. We've all got our beers. Cheers. We'll come cheers, around Ed. and kind of discuss them a little bit further because I think what I'd like to find out is what do you guys think of European beers, the traditional ones? I mean, I wish we could share all these. I don't. Has anybody had Trooper? Yeah. I have. I have. Yeah. Okay, Jay, yeah, did you, you enjoy it? Yeah, so I look at it as um, it's a little um, cliche having a a, a music group sponsor or be on a a can of beer. Gimmicky, Um, yeah. But, yeah, gimmicky. I couldn't have the word. But it was good. You know, it's still a great beer. Yes. Um, I know that it's (laughs) – and I I must admit I'm not a heavy metal fan, but I do know who (laughs) Iron Maiden was, but I didn't know the song Trooper. And uh, apparently it was inspired by the Charge of the Light Brigade. I don't know if you remember that, but uh, onward, onward, into the Valley of Death, rode the 300, I don't know, something like that. (laughs) You'd be the only one to remember it. We were on the line. Oh, thank you. I was there. (laughs) But yeah, so the the guy, Bruce Dickinson, anybody, what was he, the band drummer? or lead singer. He's a singer, yeah. Oh, he's a singer. Okay. Um, well, he, he's done quite a few beers with this uh, Robinson's Brewery. And I think this brings out all the best um, aspects and characteristics of an English special bitter, which is not bitter, which is, you know, a, a misnamer, I, I guess. A misnomer? Right. Misnamer. It's whatever. Yeah, whatever. It, it ain't right. So, <laughs> But this is beautiful and biscuity, and it's got, you know, all the English uh, hops in it and everything comes out delicious but it's not at the end of it it doesn't have any bitterness which is where the the problem comes when people say what's esb stand for so <laughs> well i feel i do have a question for you about about that the um 
English beers, you know, a lot of them are cask. A lot of them are draft over there. Uh, how do they hold up in cans? And are they dialing in the carbonation? Or how, how does that feel to you as far as, like, authenticity goes? Well, you've got to definitely separate out the real ales from the ones that come, as you say, in cans and are slightly carbonated. Uh, you're never going to get the same mouthfeel or carbonation from a beer that is uh, out of a keg as you do out of a can. They just have to add a certain, some, a certain amount to it. This actually has got minimum carbonation, so it turns out real good. Uh, and it, this is this has got a very nice head actually and the one i had earlier i haven't drunk enough of this um the lacing went down the side real well which i always find is a good a good sign for a beer <laughs> yeah yeah i think uh i mean boddington's is a pub ale right uh it's a cream ale actually but it oh, is okay. a pub it's called boddington's pub ale yeah you're right oh. and now that's made by one of the big boys surprisingly difficult to get now over here <laughs> no really I yep. see it. Uh, maybe seasonally i i see it in march around march or you know around st patty's for whatever reason yeah and and tetley's used to be a, a good beer as well but that seems to have gone away i i did get a couple of backup beers just in case i didn't think this one was going to taste like my local beer that i picked but uh i may or may not go to those depending on if i finish this <laughs> <laughs> I've had a couple already, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so your your first question, also back to it, like what do we think of of European beers? I, I was kind of thinking about it. I don't have a whole lot of them all the time, and I recently kind of I don't know. Well, you know how you know the beers we've brought to a lot of our tastings fill with all the you know the sugar and the you know IPAs and all that. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of big, a lot of big stouts too. But like right now in this season, I don't know why I want to drink crisp pilsner and lagers right now. And I, I uh, eating them up. And we just did a video at our local new brewery, Goldfinger Brewery. They only do lager beers, and we think they're great. Um, so that's kind of my take on it right now. I'm trying oh, to breeze out right now. What's that? Lagers. It's the perfect weather for lagers. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. So. Um, what do you think of the Scottish one? Scottish one, I'm really enjoying it. Actually, it's as as I'm drinking it more, it's kind of that kind of like smooth maltiness kind of sticks around a little more, and uh, it's just really smooth too. I, I was I was actually I was kind of for some reason expecting like more bite with the carbonation, but it's 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 a really smooth but uh, smooth beer. You can kind of still look at it's still got that. That head. Oh, look at that beautiful oh, yeah. color and that's yeah. not a um it's not a it's a scottish <laughs> ale not a shilling ale or are they Correct. the same i think they're different billy you know the difference don't you well, yeah, yeah. Billy loves them, so. yeah yeah we 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 homebrewed a, uh, a couple of them and and we know the other uh, the, there's different uh there, there's the shilling beers and then there you know there's a couple different levels of that and there's the wee heavy but yeah we we've we've done quite a few and it's all just built on alcohol and, and the heft of the grain bill and, and, you know, the maltiness. Oh, yeah. What was the alcohol of uh, all our beers? I think mine is, uh, I don't know. Hang on. I've got to put my glasses on. Talk amongst yourselves. I, I would say, Matt, I was going to go back to what you were saying about how you took a couple sips and um, I always live by the philosophy that, uh, like even Milk Money, we're, we're doing, not we're doing flights, we're doing tasters. Mm -hmm. But I think you need to have at least in my opinion, a minimum of like seven or eight ounces of a beer, four or five sips for sure to really taste what it's like. Specifically, if you had a different beer before it, you need to clean the palate, which takes a couple of sips. Right. So I'm all about having at least, like I said, seven, eight ounces before you can actually taste a beer. Yeah. I feel like it'll, it, and it'll kind of allows it to sort of build on itself and kind of really yeah. through. Yeah. So mine is 4.7. Mine's 5.2. Okay. Mine's four point nine. I'm kind of surprised that the the the, the Einger Oktoberfest is a five point eight. I honestly expected it to be a little bit lower. Hmm. For it's it's super smooth and and it's dry. It's checking all the boxes for me. But like for something you like, you're gonna want to crush a bunch of liters of you know and, and hang out <laughs> with your friends. I was expecting to be in the in the in the in the mid fours. <laughs> kind of a big beer, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, big beer is uh, four point eight. 
four point eight. Okay, so we're all we're all pretty much in there. I mean, sounds like uh, Matt's got the strongest one. I've got to watch him. What's the difference between a fast beer and a Marzen? Ooh, who wants to feel that? Well, you're <laughs> drinking it. You should know. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> uh, the the Marzen Oktoberfest is the original style, to my knowledge. And Jay, you can correct me if I'm wrong. And that is the that is the one that we would brew in in March, hence the name Marzen, and, and and it would be ready in lagering, and it would be ready for the September October Oktoberfest time. The fest beer is a is a is more of a modern invention, from my understanding, and it's more of a golden, a little lower alcohol, and it's that's the one you're gonna you're gonna rip a bunch of it at the fest, and and you know you're gonna be okay. As I like to say, you could drink a bunch of these. You could drink a bunch of these. <laughs> Try and stump Bill, man. That was grand. Hey, I I believe it. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I was just kind of. I, I, I feel over. like I threw a lot of confidence behind that. Jay, did you okay? I think so. I, I'm not any more an expert than any of you guys, but I yeah. do agree that it is a lower content of alcohol because they want you to be able to throw them down, or I like to say, crush them. Yeah, they're very yeah. pointable. Yes, yeah, pint able pint. to drink them, drink them from a boot, right? So, yeah, right. You know. Yeah, <laughs> you don't get your nose caught in that lid, there, Bill. Yeah, <laughs> you and all your twenty friends, no covert involved, though. <laughs> This is um, the COVID-friendly so, glass. Uh, yeah. So, the, so the, the pills or the, the pill styles that uh, Jay and who else? Brian? You, you're Brian. right. Yeah. So, they're not hella slagers. They're straight up pilsners, right? Yeah. Mine yeah. is. Smith, I'd like to put a plug in for Art History, who is also doing a couple of really nice uh, uh, European beers. And they've got another – they've got a – What's that tapper called? Did you find out what that was called? He told yeah. uh, when we went out there. He told me, and I can't remember. The, I think it's called the Czech side faucet or the Czech yeah. side tap or something like that. Yeah. It's awesome to pour a beer on that, you know. Very and, cool. Yeah. And you get this all this wet foam, you know, that sits yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, I love it. That sweet foam pour, right? Yeah. Right. So he was, he was kind of explaining at Goldfinger that like you get the. Like if you pour a beer normally, the, the foam kind of has like a bitter, if you just drink the foam, it has kind of a bitter flavor to it. But the way they pour it with the wet foam, you get that like sweet aroma and the sweet flavor out of it. So yeah. there's actually a check. I, I wasn't there, but I watched the video. <laughs> oh, you weren't there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know, us at the Brit and Yankee, we were there three weeks before they opened. So we saw all of it up front, you know. Naturally, <laughs> yeah. Getting the jump on us, Phil. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, I, the coolest thing I learned from them was the philosophy or the reasoning why they pour it that way because the head keeps the oxygen out of the beer so you can drink it all the way to the bottom. That's why it is I have a, a thicker head that stays with it the whole time you're drinking yeah. it. It's very I never cool. do that before. When I poured my pill, there was zero head. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, what happened there? <laughs> I, well, I, I was trying to can't do the camera thing and, and pour at the same time. Maybe it was my fault. I don't know. Some good lacing on mine. There we go. Oh, pretty good, though. Look at that. Beautiful. Love it. I should take a date on this thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, you bring up dates. Um, that's a very important factor when it comes to things like pills and uh, beers that are not – well, beers that have the hops in them that fade away, but also the pills because – I. I don't think they had too many hops in it, but there's something changes with the pills. I think it's the yeast that's really the star of the show with uh, pilsners. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know, Agreed. and that's that's where where proprietaries. I think. I, I mean, I predict you know with with my second beer, my local beer, it's going to be quite different based on that that lager yeast. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and also in my beer. The malts are very important, and there's specific types of malts they put in there. And then the hops are, you know, the range of hops that they use to put in here, East Kent Goldings, that sort of thing. I yeah. did, uh, for my second beer, I found out exactly what the malt bill was and the hops. So we'll be able to give perfect props to our local guys. Nice. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I actually steer clear of a lot of European beers is because... The, the, especially the, 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 the lagers and, and you want to drink them fresh, right? And you just don't know sometimes and they got a long way to travel. So the, the date on the bottom of my Bitburger basically says that it's good until like, it said it was born on date was like January 27th. Okay. 
Okay. Um, and it's, you know, I, I'm not sure how to read European data. I probably, probably can't show this, but um, yeah, it says uh, January 27th, uh, 2020 to January 26th of 2021. Right. But the, I was saying is like the, compared to a, like a, a gold finger, like, or wherever you're getting it from, um, Maplewood makes an excellent lager, uh, but like you're getting a, you're getting a beer, even if it's only like a month old from Europe, you know, there's travel and there's storage and whatnot. And there's, you know, it's going to be warm and then it's going to be cold. Right. Hey, but wait I a feel, minute. I feel guys. like a fresh Pilsner is going to beat out, uh, even one of the best European yeah. beers over, you know, just yeah, make it trip over. Right. Yeah. Well, what about, what about IPAs? I mean, they went on a four month voyage by ship to get from yeah. England to India. You, can, you know, that's a, that's a hell of a time. <laughs> but well, I'm guessing those, those, those IPAs probably tasted better two weeks out than four months later. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Ask the Indian soldiers who were uh, not the Indian, the English yeah. soldiers who were out there. Phil, Phil, the you Indian. were there. Can I you was tell there. Yeah, I that? was. <laughs> I was at the charge of the light brigade too, which is why I chose this. <laughs> right. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> so the one thing I think that we take away from this is that depending on the style of the beer is going to depend on how long it's going to last. And I'll bet you your Scottish ale will last a lot longer um, than the pills. Yeah. And right. Maybe even my pub ale. I looked on the That's bottom the of my can before I tossed it away. Hey, a lot of times those Scottish ales will taste even better with a little bit of age on them. Yeah, I yes. don't think I we, we were at Dry City having their Scottish ale, and it had been sitting on there for a while. You know, people I, people are generally scared of high ABV Scottish ales, I, I would assume. But um, holy crap. Uh, that's when we brewed our beer with them. It was really good. Yeah. Holy crap. Good old Oliver. Little, little, little bit of age on those things. And yeah. Yep. Well, I think it's time for us to drink this beer up. And uh, I'm going to have Jay. Have you poured your local beer, Jay? I sure have. Oh, God. We don't even get to see him pour that one. He's I, No, I recorded it. You can put it on here. Okay, good man. So <laughs> why don't we turn to Jay as he's got a beer from Florida, and you can tell us all about these guys and what it is. This is a Crooked Thumb. They're out of Safety Harbor, which is in the Pinellas County, just north of St. Pete. Um, there's a couple of breweries in that town. I, you know, I'm not ripping on either of them. I love them both, but Crooked Thumb has definitely got their lager down pat. And there's another one called Trouble Waters, which is actually owned from a guy who grew up in Bolingbrook, Illinois. Wow. Um, I, I, I couldn't get their beer, so I got the oh. – <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I love their beer as well, but I got the Harbor – or the Crooked Thumb Harbor Lager, and it, it, it's pouring a little darker than my other beer for sure. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, I'd say it is. And let me take another sip. That, looks more, like, uh, that looks more like a Vienna. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know what? I got to put my cheaters on again. I, you guys like, it, it, it tastes like a Vienna. <laughs> it's one of my favorite beers down here. It comes in at 5.2%. 5, 5 it's a little sweeter, a little more malty. Um, wow. Just like a lager? Maybe just yeah. a copper lager, right? Kind of, yeah. Like definitely for sure by the color, but actually by the taste as well. Sure, and, it doesn't have COVID. Um, <laughs> you, are in, you are in Florida. <laughs> well, if it does, I got it now. But uh, oh boy. side note, I'm drinking it out of a stolen glass, which was a wicked weed glass from a local restaurant down here that my dad stole. Oh, there he goes, blaming, blaming the agent. It was on his birthday, and he knew I wanted a glass, so he took it for me. Way to go, Pops. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's in a wheelchair, and he's still stealing shit for his <laughs> dad. Hell Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's going to come after him in a wheelchair. Oh. No, yeah, exactly. you need to run in a wheelchair. Yeah, right. Hey, hey the one thing oh, I found you. out. The one thing I found out about getting older is you can get away with a lot of shit. <laughs> he does whatever he wants. He, he either claims I'm a veteran, you need to help me out, I'm crippled, whatever. <laughs> he got me this class because I like I really wanted it, and then I'm like, we're in the car, and I'm like, what did you do? And he's like, pulling his glass out of his like <laughs> stomach area, and I'm like. Was that next to your balls? <laughs> yeah, right. I for sure had yeah. to wash it, but it, it's a cool glass from Wicked Weed out of Asheville. Yeah, thanks, nice. Dad. 
I've been there. Hey, here yes. you go, here you go, son. I got you a little something for you. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what he said. <laughs> you have to talk in that accent for the rest of the show, by the way. All right, Gav. <laughs> well, my 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 uh, lock, stock, and smoking barrels. <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> whereabouts? So, whereabouts are you, Jay? I am in St. Petersburg, so I'm basically in Pinellas County. Um, in this particular area, there is a ton of breweries. It's I would rank it close to Chicago or Asheville or uh, uh, Denver. There's a lot of them opening up and some that have been closing down because of the COVID. Um, strict, if you're strictly just a brewery, you can only do to-go service. But if you have food, you can have people come in and hang out. Um, and I expect they just changed it recently. It might be back to where breweries can have people in them or now again, but I always forget. I usually pick up the stuff at the brewery and leave just because half of them, you have one seat and then 10 feet away, someone else. And I'm like, Hey, how's your beer down there? <laughs> so I'd rather just take it home and drink it by myself. I just, I just Googled breweries in St. Petersburg, Florida. And apparently, you know how like up here, what is, what do we have? Malt, malt row in Chicago. Yeah, is that what it is. So you guys have the. It's called the Gulp Coast. Yeah, I actually have a shirt that says the Gulf Coast Breweries on it. I was going to wear it tonight, but like I said, I just cruised down from the beach after a date night. Yeah, um, and I didn't even change, so I got my Pollyanna shirt on. But nice. <laughs> People know Pollyanna. Oh yeah, even oh, though right. hey, 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 hey. hey. oh. <laughs> now wait. Okay, so we, which which one was bear. that? Because that, that was kind pills. of uh, a little bit, I couldn't really see. Cause Pollyanna was, Pills. Right. Pollyanna oh, Pollyanna Pills. Yeah. There it is. Nice. Beautiful. So I helped, I helped Brian to make that recipe for that beer. You said, say that again? I said I helped Brian decide on the recipe for that beer. Nice. Oh, yes. All right. It, obviously, it's, yes, I, I did. Can't, I can't talk shit about it. All right. Uh, <laughs> And for, and for those who don't know, uh, Jay used to work up at the uh, Pollyanna in Rosalea. Well, yeah, well, Rosalea, Rosalea in Roselle. Oh, my God. Roselle. How many have I added? <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> I just opened mine. You let's did. have a look. Yeah, I'm, I'm on my next beer, aren't you guys? You guys just no, let's have a look yeah, at your paw. I didn't open yet. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I should probably uh, – you want me to record that too, huh? What do you got, Bill? Uh, I have the – uh, I did oh, Iinger originally, and now I'm doing the Chicago. I got the Dovetail Oktoberfest or Oktoberfest beer, but it's a multi autumn colored party making beer, six point seven percent. I knew you were going to do Dovetail. I had a feeling. I didn't know. So what they're they they're actually a percent above uh, Iinger, which I again I have a problem with. I want I want low I want lower ABV. You know, beers. I'm gonna like crank some liters, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. All right. There we go. All oh, right. Night. Look at that. A lovely pour. I was you know a little more. Problem, you know the problem you got there, Brian? Is you What's putting that? Pill, you're putting pills into a chalice. I know, right? It ain't a fucking fun. Trappist beer. <laughs> All right. What's Matt got? He's pouring right. right now. We can see him. Doing you know, something pour- below where uh, his hands with below. Okay, what do you got? Below deck. <laughs> I poured too hard. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I need a third hand. And you're pouring us. Oh, pour. gonna- we need five minutes. Hey, we yeah. lost yeah. Bill, so you got time for that to settle. Well, I was about to. I, I ran out of space in my glass, so I, I had to just oh. kill the rest of it. And, um, and okay, so wait a minute. So you got Brian drinking a pills out of a chalice. And I got, got you drinking a local Scottish uh, out of a freaking pills glass. What's going on there? Well, you know, this is like the only one close to a, 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 a uh, what's the name of it? The Scottish glass. Shit. A thistle. Uh, a what? A thistle. It's the closest thing I got, so. Okay. Uh, so, anyway. I, I, I don't care. So, I, yes, I'm drinking Robert the Bruce by Three Floyds, which is a Scottish ale. So, yeah. Um, not super local to us, but local in the Midwest here. So, you know, Indiana. Uh, I'm drive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I could I could go drive and get this beer. Um, trying to see how much 
what the percentage is. Did they reopen or are they are they shut down for now? I'm not sure. Are they group up group up closed down? Yeah. Clubs down. Yeah, they're they're still producing. I think it's pretty high that Robert the Bruce, because I have to admit the original Yankee on the Britain Yankee, he and I used to love that beer. I still like it a lot. It is it's a great yeah. representation of a Scottish ale. So well, yeah, Matt, can Matt, can you talk about Robert the Bruce versus the uh uh Bellhaven? Because we you know, we've talked about this on the side that Americans, you know, obviously like to crank up yeah the 12 just about everything a european wants to do you know and, and wreck all the subtleties out of it yeah I, um smelling it it's kind of actually less of an aroma coming out of it it's definitely darker i mean look at that I, that looks kind of really dark on my camera i can still see through it it's not really coming through like that but um it's dark it's really dark uh, and i know I, other scottish beer scottish ales i've seen or dark too, but that last one seemed a little lighter. Um, yeah, uh, uh, let's see here. Yeah, so it's it's different. Like if you told me they were different styles, I would kind of say I would I would believe you. Um, it does taste a little more alcohol, you know, content as far as I, I looked it up. It's six and a half percent. So not that much more. The other one was 5.2. Uh, I think it's a little less malty, a little less kind of like less biscuity, I guess you could say, than the other one. But I think it's got a real strong initial flavor here. I, I need a few more sips as we were just talking about. So I forgot to ask Brian, what did you think of, or did you not taste it yet? What did you I think? Did. I did. Oh. So, uh, like I said, you know, Jake, Jake can probably speak to this more than I can because he was there when they were kind of inventing this beer. But um, I think pills in general, it's really the, the yeast that, that stands out. That's what you're, you're tasting. And you got these days, you got a lot of breweries that have, you know, chem, chem labs in their breweries now that they're trying to come up with proprietary yeast. I will say, I think, uh, to, be, to be honest, I think the Bitburger tastes a little bit more clean. Um, the, I think the yeast character uh, on this beer um, has a little more, I, I don't know the best way to describe it, but it has a little more uh, tinge or a little more funk to it, a little more skunk maybe. Um, and not in a bad, you know what I mean, in that, in that lager yeast way. But um, the, color, the color on it is, is freaking beautiful. I mean, it's, it's a t great tasting beer. Um, I, I would assume that they're probably using Hallerto hops, which is, uh, you know, traditional for pills. But yeah. It's a, it's a winner. I, I, yeah, I don't remember what uh, hops he was using. I will say a side note to, the, to that particular beer. Pollyanna, and I don't have my glassware with me. It's inside. I could grab it. But they made a Pilsner class with the Pollyanna hop logo on the bottom. And so I filled one with the Pollyanna pills, and I put it on the windowsill, and I washed it for three hours. It still was... Uh, developing bubbles in it and everyone's like why would you do that for three hours well, i wanted to see how long it would go and still produce bubbles from the little emblem that was etched uh -huh. in the bottom of the glass yeah it was uh -huh. three hours wow. yeah i'm not going to take three hours to drink a beer i'm like if i take 30 <laughs> right. minutes it better be a freaking 18 percent that's why i wouldn't be drinking this out of a chalice either right <laughs> right but and the one other thing i know i i vaguely remember not vaguely but i do remember about <laughs> The Pollyanna Pills is, I think it had a little bit of sweetness to it more than some other beers. Just my opinion. I would, I'm fine. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would, yeah. You know, compared to like, I, I don't know. Again, maybe maybe Phil could speak to this. Maybe you could speak to this. But Bitburger, I would assume be somewhat of a benchmark as far as a Pills goes, just in general. But yeah, this thing, um, this in comparison, it was definitely a bit sweeter. Like I said, I think the uh, the lager yeast was was a bit uh, more pungent, more a little stronger on the on the mouth feel. <clears throat> yeah. So Jay, how did you like the comparison with your pills, lo local pills, to your oldie pills? <laughs> yeah, I would say the uh, um, crooked thumb is definitely a sweeter, more malty, and it, and I don't even know it's a, it's a lager. I don't know it's not even a pills. Like so, I didn't get the right beer to compare, but um, 
It was definitely sweeter and, and more malty from the local beer, but not to produce or not to like promote Aldi, but Aldi has some good ass beers for cheap prices. If that particular week you're strung out for money, hit Aldi up for a couple beers. And you know, yeah. that's a, a very, I don't think that's one that we tried either. Um, I think we tried more of like the freaking like IPA style yeah. beer at there. Yeah. Ours were domestic. I, I think all domestic too. Yeah. And they were all made in the same, same brewery in like New York or something like that. They all said yeah. the same, yeah. you know, yeah. Um, Bill, yes. Have you have you poured your local brew yet? And what what's yes, your absolutely. comparison? So I'm doing Iinger for those of you who are keeping score at home versus uh, Dovetail Oktoberfest. And oh, right. it, I got I'm kind of it's it's very interesting. Dovetails is a whole percent and maybe maybe a one point one or one point two higher. Iinger had the had the more richer, bigger like caramel flavor like. And, and dovetail was a little more subtle. It had that toasty, bready, you know, thing you're looking for. It's lighter caramel. Both of them finished dry. You know what I hate is is with a lot of these local um, Oktoberfests. It's it's my favorite. It's one of my favorite styles. It's definitely my favorite seasonal. So I, I, I sample frequently. But a lot of the local ones, what they get wrong is they'll get the they'll get a little too caramel sweet with the whole deal. Like they try to get a little too fancy or a little too heavy handed with the specialty grains. Yeah. And this is a definitely a Oktoberfest is a balancing act and it should be, it should always finish dry. And Inger, I got to tell you, like I was shocked at like how big of a flavor they got, but it also just kind of finished out dry and it was gone, you know, and it made you want to drink more. So uh, I, I, I like I, them both. I heard uh, one. I heard once that if it was a good fest beer slash, I guess you know, fest beer is just they produce that for festivals, right? It's not like a the Mars and like Itasca fest from Church right. Street. But if it finishes nutty, then it's really true to style. If it finishes, as you said, caramel sweet, then it's more of a uh, U.S. version. Yep. Yep, and that and that's what I see with a lot of the U.S. versions. I wouldn't go over six percent on a fest beer, right? I mean, run chug them, right? <laughs> I did. I, yeah, went, I gotta get my boot out. I went. Right? I did go out to uh, Oktoberfest once back in '99, I think it was, when you guys were in school, and <laughs> and uh, we went to one of I can't remember which tent it was Paul Lena, that's what it was and it was basically the lager style beer that you got there not the traditional fest beer but I did still manage to get through five liters of it I don't know how I did that but I did it <laughs> oh my God. Wow. I, think it's just, I think it's just the magic of being there right I think so yeah yeah um it's like a but, body it's, beer, right? <laughs> special powers, yeah well I've got my beer local beer and I've got in uh, one of these cool looking uh, howler type, that, I don't know if it's a howler or what it is, but it's Brother Chimp's Shyla, which is his yeah. English pub ale. You got this plastic thing and you pull that off, and that's the equivalent. Uh, hang on a minute, guys, I can't get it off. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> so this is, the, uh, this is the equivalent. Of... Tune in next week and watch Phil open a beer. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> cliffhanger. It's, it's the equivalent of putting that stuff on it. Okay, now now it's too slippery and I can't open it. So I'm gonna go. <laughs> ah, there we the go. Man. Right, I got like, that. Right. I have my brother chimp glass. There we go. So we're gonna pour that out there. Now this is called Shyla, and Steve Newman out there in North Aurora was one of these guys who opened up his brewery or was trying to open his brewery up the week that they declared COVID uh, a yeah. bad thing and everybody had to close down. Well, we know COVID's a bad thing. There we go. Yeah, Beautiful. I can't like relate to that at all. What? I can't relate to that at all. Yeah, no, yeah no, that's no, right. No. Yeah, I got the moment. So he made this one, which has got um, a base malt of Maris Otter. He's got a little flake barley in it. I'm reading here. He told me what, he, what it was. Um, and a little caramel in there, a dash of chocolate malt, and a pinch of roasted barley. I like the way a dash, a pinch. That's a pinch. <laughs> and the hops are Willamette and EKG. So this pours out absolutely delicious. 
The and first thing I, I notice is it's a little lighter in color. You can see it's just a little yep. bit lighter, a little bit more golden. But yeah. the aroma from it is really a lot more, a lot different to the Trooper. Um, not quite so malty. And when you taste it, it's really awesome. Did you taste that? Got it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, while you're drinking <laughs> his his beer has a little bit more of a bite to it uh the hops stand out a little bit more not quite as smooth but from the perspective of being a pub ale i think he originally did this as an esb and i said it's not an esb but as a pub ale something you can push down your neck uh, i think this is 4.5 there it is on the front there this is awesome because when it's you open, Phil? yeah how long, is, how long is brother chip been around for oh wait you just said that they uh, just yeah, since the beginning of march yeah they're out in a very small um strip mall in north aurora hmm. and uh it, steve has managed to brew uh beer and sell it to go because he's really close to i don't know if you know woodman's which is in north right. aurora he's right close to that there's a lot of houses around there and then he did a, uh, uh, just to help himself and then have a restaurant help him. They did a thing with a pizza place behind him, Raimondo's. And so he has managed to survive uh, and done quite well through to-go sales. And he hasn't canned anything other than in these rather awesome things, which incidentally, I wash these out. And then if I've got a, a howler that I've opened and I don't want to drink it all now, I'll pour it in here, turn the top on. Put it in the fridge. You're, you're good for the next day. Nice. How many offers do they have right now? I think he's got about eight taps. Could have a little oh. bit more. What? Yeah, he's, he's, he's making – and actually, he just hired a, a brewer. This is what I would say is the best pub ale I've tasted a long time uh, if you want kind of an almost authentic English pub ale. I don't think we see a lot of English pub ales done locally in local mm -hmm. you know, breweries. Where would you suggest going uh, for anyone watching if, if they wanted to try that style and, and uh, see how it comes? Well, let's see. Brother Chimp? Uh, Brother Chimp? No. <laughs> um, I know our history is going to be producing an English, an ESB, a bitter, um, but they were so successful with all their other beers that they had to stop doing that one first and produce the others. But I think he said he's going to produce it in a month or so. Um, I can't remember many places. It's kind of like English mild, right? Bill? Uh, Riverlands, right, Phil? We, didn't we? Arthur didn't we B's. Arthur B's pub no, ale. Now, that's, really a, that's a dark mild. Oh, okay. Yeah, so not quite the same bitter, okay. you know, an ESB, if you will. Um, I was trying to really? think now. It's, it, it, they're very few and far between. I really like that one from Riverlands, though. That was, that was really good. If you guys go in, have you, do you guys know of any other English bitters or anything like that that you've, you've oh, come across? <laughs> you got any down in Florida, Jay? No, I just was looking at my phone, like what beers I had down here. And I know I had one down here. I can't remember which brewery it was, but uh, but between putting on the readers and <laughs> it being 10 o'clock here or after 10 Florida time, and I worked a full day at the bike shop. I'm tired, so but I will find out and I'll let you know for sure. He's getting old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I came down here. <laughs> so what it, out of your choices do you prefer the European or the US? Or is it that they're so different that you know doesn't matter? We're not we're comparing apples to pears. All right. I'll go with this one. So I've been thinking about this because I went kind of first. I'm coming back to it. I've drank a lot of it now. Um, this is a bigger beer. The U.S. version is just bigger. It just feels and tastes bigger. I don't know if that, that's, that's, my, that's my adjective for it or anything like that. But it's, it's got more alcohol to it. You can taste that. It also has a bigger punch of, the. I feel like the malt character is hitting you a little bit harder. Um, my... My review has been changed to this is the beer that you will drink when you spill the blood of your enemies <laughs> and drink it out of your, your enemy's skull, which Billy has said before as well. Um, 
the, yeah, this is this is the this is like the victory beer. Uh, the one earlier, the uh, you know the traditional Bellhaven one. This is the one I would drink on a daily basis. I think I can nail these. Like I, they're it was super good. I liked. I think the Three Floyds had more more of a caramel flavor. This one had more of a malty biscuity flavor. I guess if that makes sense, biscuity nutty. Yep. I guess nutty nutty biscuity flavor. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. I, I think I prefer the original, the Bellhaven, the traditional. Uh, but this is a great. I, I like the Three Floyds beer for sure. So I, it I is, don't have a skull, but I do have a horn. I, I almost went and got my horn. All right, hold on. Ah, <laughs> uh, there he goes. He's got a skull. He does have a skull. All oh, right, he's got oh. a horn. Shit. So, so what do you think, Bill? What What's your favorite there? Uh, I'm going with the traditional as well. The the Iinger. Uh, I. Oh. Both of them had awesome flavors, and here's the other one. Both of them had were very well made, awesome flavors. They're both incredible beers. And honestly, it almost comes down to ABV for me. Like I, I prefer a lower ABV Oktoberfest just because if I'm celebrating and having a good time, I don't want to stop at two. You know, I want to keep going. So I, the, and the Einger finished dry and it had that little caramel and and you know toasty bready touch to it. It was really really good. So, oh look, he's he's got his horn. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I kind of agree with you, Bill. I like I like to down it quite fast, and if you have two or three of them, you want to at least be standing upright. <laughs> right, and that, that's the kind of the purpose of the beer and, and the idea of the Oktoberfest in general. So, um, the more flavor you can pack, and and the lower ABV and drier beers is the one you want. Brian, despite the fact that you had an argument with your hairdresser, what do you think of your beer? <laughs> <laughs> That's funnier than you know, Phil. Um, I, I'm, going, I'm going with the uh, Bit Burger, actually. You yeah. know, they've been doing it forever. There's a reason why it's the number one beer. I mean, obviously, if I had to make a comparison, I would say it's probably the, you know, Germany Miller Lite equivalent or Bud Light or whatever, right? That's the one that you go to a, you go to a, a, a football match, right, and you slug a ton of them. I think the Pollyanna Pills has some great flavor. Um, I think it's, it's, I wouldn't drink a ton of them as much as I would the Bitburger. And I feel like Pilsners are one of those, like, like we said, crushable beers. Uh, but I am super down to try some more Pilsners and I know there's a billion of them over there. Hey, sounds like a show. <laughs> Making it on the road, baby. Yeah. yeah. Right. So Jay, before you fall asleep, which I'm one not, do you I'm prefer? I'm tired. My eyes are drooping. Yeah. I'm not tired. Well, I am a little bit, but. No, I, I, I would say definitely I like the traditional European beers for the flavor and the alcohol content because they're lower. If I'm at an outdoor event and it's local, I want to drink local beer. But I also know that if I have three or four of those local beers, I'm going to be falling asleep or not being able to drive home. So I'm torn. It just depends on the situation I'm at. If I can only have two beers – yeah, I want something local because I want to be able to, to support a local brewery. Yep. But flavor-wise, it's hard to beat recipes that have been done for 100, 200, 300 years. I don't care how many times you try. Even if you're the best brewer in the world right now, it's hard to replicate the exact uh, recipe they had from 300 years ago. My beer of choice when I have to drink something that's not local is Pills and Oracle. Like my grandmother drank it. Everyone in my family drank it. We check. How can we not drink pills in Oracle? I, I, I have to agree with you there. I, I, that was one of the first lagers I ever drank in the pubs. Yeah. We, we used to just call it pills. And, right. You know, and that's where the original, I mean, that's where it originally came from, I guess, For right? Sure. Got, oh, what? Sorry? I mean, adding, I, I, think, I think at the end of the day, if, if you're watching this, and, and I think the most important thing to do is to – make sure to try the traditional style. See where those beers came from. I yeah. think that's an important part yeah. of this because, like I said, Bitburger, you know, it's 213-year-old brewery, right? These guys have been doing it forever, like Jay said. That's the benchmark, right? Now, we talk a lot about, like, um, 
bourbon barrel aging and how Goose Island is the benchmark. But if we're talking like all these old traditional styles, you got to go try those old, old world styles because that's that's what everyone's technically trying to be like, right? right. Or improve. Sure. Yeah, I, I agree with you, uh, Brian. That's absolutely it. And, and that's why I'm going to go split decision on mine because uh, oh, I, I threw away my glass. <laughs> I threw away my can. So Trooper, I, if anybody sees Trooper out there in like, I think it's in Binney's, that's where I got mine. I'm sure it's elsewhere. Grab, grab a four pack and try it because I don't think you'll be disappointed. Um, it's very crushable, very pintable sessionable whatever all the other words you can do you know just drink a few of them and um and as i say you know my local one here brother chimp i every time i go there i have a pint of this because i know this is a really good beer that appears to appeals to me now my taste buds started a lot earlier than you guys and it started with this type of beer so that's kind of what i'm tuned into which is why maybe i don't like the hazies <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah yeah all right guys well hey thanks a lot for uh, allowing me to hijack your round table <laughs> thanks for thanks for running it thanks for making sure it didn't go off the rails phil I, I i hope the interruptions come out well so i think you know it's it's cheers from everybody and there's only got one thing to say and it's Time, gentlemen, please. Get up your wives. Come on. Off you go. Out you go. Bye. Cheers, folks. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>